Hello children, in today's class we will be discussing the entire chapter of refraction through a lens. That is, we are going to have one short video. So with this video, you are going to have a quick revision just before the examinations. Dear children, in our channel already we had uploaded refraction through a lens in detail. I mean unit wise uh, this chapter was uploaded. So links will be given in the description. If you need in detail discussion of a refraction through a lens, kindly go through the link, go through the links which are given in the description. So that what will happen, you will have more clarity. Okay, children, fine. So come to this chapter. In this chapter, mainly we will be discussing about the lens, types of lens, terms related to the lens. After that, we will study the principal rays which are required to make a ray diagrams. After that, we will discuss the image formation and characteristics of the image formed by convex lens and as well as concave lens. Then we discuss the sign convention. Children, sign convention and the rules are very important. Then all what will happen? You will solve the numericals. Then we will discuss linear magnification, power of a lens and a magnifying lens. And finally, how to calculate the focal length of a given convex lens and the differences and the applications of convex and concave lenses. So these are the topics which we are going to cover in this chapter. Is that clear? Yes. Now first let us discuss, let us just try to recall what is a lens children. Children, what is a lens? Yes, lens is a, a transparent refracting medium. Then you may get a one doubt. Sir, already we learnt about a prism. So prism also transparent refracting medium only then what makes a difference yes children here the small difference is that prism is a transparent refracting medium which is consisting of plane surfaces which is arranged in the form of triangle so that you will have a triangular cross section when it comes to the lens children so lens is a transparent refracting medium which is bounded by either one or two spherical surfaces so it may be having a two spherical surfaces. If not, one spherical surface, one plane surface will be there. Clear? Fine. So here we have two types of lenses. One is convex lens, another one is concave lens. Convex lens and a concave lens. So here first let us see once again what is a con convex lens, the types of the convex lenses. Then we see what is a concave lens and the types of the concave lenses. First come to the children here convex lens yes convex lens it has two convex surfaces convex means what here bulged surface bulged surface such a that what will happen you know in middle children it will be thick it's very very important in middle it is thick at periphery it is thin i mean it at it edges so in middle it is thick at edges it is thin clear fine so what is the double convex lens or biconvex lens so the convex lens with the two spherical surfaces is called biconvex lens or double convex, convex lens then you may get a one doubt so then what is the equiconvex lens what makes the difference yes children so every this uh, spherical surface has some radius of curvature right so here let us say its radius of curvature is r1 and the second radius of curvature is the r2 let us say so when you say double or biconvex lens children, here R1 is not equal to R2. But whereas the double convex lens or biconvex lens in which R1 is equal to R2, then such a convex lens is called equiconvex lens, which means what? Equiconvex lens, the convex lens with, with what? Same radius of curvature, radius of curvature. Is it clear? So try to understand children here. All equiconvex lenses are double convex lenses, but all double convex lenses are not equiconvex lenses. Only one thing, children, equiconvex lens, what you should remember, radius of curvature must be equal. Clear? Fine. Next, come to the plano convex lens. Yes, the con means one side convex surface will be there, another side plane surfaces will be there. That's it. Okay, fine. And I come to the Concavo convex, concavo convex lens. Children, it's very, 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 very important. So when I draw like this, some students may get out. Sir, what if I draw like this? Because I have seen some students are by hurting. Concavo convex surface, which means what? First concave surface should come, then convex surface should come. No, it's not like that. 
so remember that convex lens itself in middle it should be thick at periphery it should be thin that's it so finally how this concave or convex lens behaves children yes it behaves like a convex lens only clear fine next come to the concave lens now come to the concave lens yes you can see here here is a concave lens again same thing this is what actually double lens and here just i wrote it as it's a equi concave lens what makes the difference yes same thing here r1 is not equal to r2 here r1 is equal to r2 means the concave lens with if for example its radius of curvature equal then we can call it as a equi concave lens if not we can call it as a double concave lens or bi concave lens here also children all equi concave lenses are double or bi concave lenses but all double concave lenses are not equi concave lenses that is what we have to remember clear fine next plano concave lens yes the concave lens with a one plane surface another one is a concave surface is called what we can say plano concave lens i come to the convexo concave lens children convexo concave lens so here also whenever you are drawing should be very careful children look at here in middle it is thin at periphery it is thick that is what the actual the nature of the concave lens look at here in middle it is thin in middle it is thin at periphery it is thick this is what actually this is what actually the concave lens is so when we say it's a convexo concave convexo concave in middle it should be thin at periphery it is a thick okay how does this convexo concave lens behave yes it behaves like a what divergent lens that is concave lens only is it clear fine so this is what actually lens and types of lenses chill once again let us recall what is a lens the transparent refracting medium with either one or two spherical surfaces is called lens is it clear fine now yes we'll try to uh, discuss the terms related to the lens have you copied this just copy 3 2 1 go can i raise yes yes fine now we'll see the action of the lens children i mean the nature of the lens it's very important so generally we study that uh, uh, convex lens you know it uh, acts like a converging lens concave lens acts like a diverging lens but why convex lens is acting like a converging lens why concave lens is acting like a diverging lens this is very important but here conditions apply children so this is a case where lens is placed in air here air is a medium or we can say i can say like this so the refractive index of lens is greater than that of the refractive index of the surrounding medium in this case only it is applicable right on this very 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 important okay now fine so if you want to understand the nature of the lens children once again let us recall the action of the prism and action of the glass lab what happens when light incidents on a prism and as well as glass lab look at here for suppose children here a light is incidenting on the prism like this then obviously so it had to go like this straight line but due to the what will happen refraction it gets deviated like this and finally it comes i mean here where we have to concentrate you know this is incident ray emerging means finally light ray will come towards the base towards the base this is very important okay na fine so it is for a very thick prism for a very thin very thin prism children what will happen this uh, refracted ray can be neglected so directly if light is coming like this it will be there but it is neglected so directly we can take like this is it clear fine now come to the glass lab if any light ray is coming in incident like this actually it had to go like this straight line so because of the uh, what the glass lab it gets refracted right yes it gets if it is the normal means yes it gets refracted like this it will make an error finally it emerges like this which means what look at here this is it's a virgil path of the light ray emergent ray means emergent ray is always parallel to the incident ray means what here glass lab does not deviate the light ray rather it will shift that's it so if you go, decrease this thickness almost thickness tends to zero that much very 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 thick if you can take then what will happen you know this this refracted ray can be neglected so directly 
it can be taken like this so we feel means in the case of very 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 thin gas glass lab we can say that you cannot find even this refracted ray so directly the light ray is coming like this it will go like that only now you may get a one out sir actually we are discussing about the lens then why are you talking about the prism and the glass lab chill and here this lens you know it is assumed to be the combination of prism and the glass lab so action of the prism plus action of the glass lab is nothing but the action of the lens over look at here convex lens convex lens the middle part of the convex lens and a middle part of the concave lens yes it is a glass lab only okay and here it is nothing but what actually it's a prisms right prisms are arranged such way that the base of the prisms are towards the glass lab but here they are quite opposite try to understand so only one thing we need to understand we need to remember so whenever light incides on the prism the emergent ray will move towards the what we can say base towards the base that's it so simple okay now so this can be assumed like this in a simple format okay so for example look at here so let us say here is a principal axis which we'll discuss anyhow so now here let us say one light ray is coming like this first light ray and the second light ray now here according to this according to this according to this according to this, what will happen the light ray so it's very very thin see children this con lens means what you think that this much big no very very thin unless you can touch unless you can touch you can't feel whether it's a convex lens or concave lens that much thin they will be okay now fine so here then what will happen this light ray should move towards the base right so this is a base base so it will move towards the base yes like this now this light ray base is upward direction upward upwards its base is so it has to move like this so finally what is happening they are converging they are converging that's what we can say that convex lens can converge the light rays it is also called as converging lens okay fine now come to the this lens concave lens right yes let us take here is okay principal axis let us say parallel beam incidenting but if you can see this is a base and here is a base so after refraction light has to go towards the base right yes it will go yes like this and this light also towards the base like this then what is happening they are getting diverged they are getting diverged hence we can call we can call concave lens as diverging lens children if you want to understand the nature of the lenses you should have an idea about the prism and a glass lab because the middle portion of the lenses is nothing but actually it's, we assume to be made up of with a glass lab and other portions are made up of with actually it's a combination of the prisms it is a combination of prism and glass lab is it clear fine now we will see the terminology related to the uh, what we can say lenses so first uh, or else uh, simultaneously we can learn about the terminology which means what what is center of curvature radius of curvature focus focal plane first focal point the second focal point these are very 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 important for examination point of view if you want to understand the entire chapter children these are the very important i can say so these are the uh, building blocks of this chapter okay na fine can i raise this okay na 3 2 1 go yes fine yes now look at here the convex lens children here how many spherical surfaces are there two spherical surfaces are there let us see the first spherical surface here is the second spherical surface children this first spherical surface is a part of a sphere we can even assume like this okay now and this spherical what we get this sphere has center right yes this sphere has a center this we can call it the center of curvature first center of curvature and here this spherical surface also is a part of a sphere part of a sphere so here also it has center of this sphere in which this second part <coughs> second spherical surface excuse me second spherical surface a part try to understand children. so here is two spherical surfaces each spherical surface is a part of a, a glass halo sphere so the center of glass halo sphere in which in which these spherical surfaces are part or called center of curvatures so here how many center of curvatures are there two center of curvatures are there clear fine children now an imaginary infinite line which is joining these two center of curvatures is called principal axis this is called principal axis principal 
axis principal axis clear fine children now so from this center if you can see children so here is this is a radius means during the this spherical what we can say a halo sphere in which a spherical surface of the lens is a part has some radius that radius only we can call it as a radius of curvature similarly yes here is also radius of curvature only children you know in a, all cases it is not compulsory that r1 should be equal to r2 it's not that if if r1 is equal to r2 such a convex lens only we can call it as the equi convex lens if not by convex or uh, what we can say double convex lens if radius of curvature are equal then only we can call it as a equi convex lens clear fine now similarly we can discuss for even concave lens here yes. so let us make a here is concave lens okay here is concave lens but this is the first surface and is a second surface try to understand and here look at here this second surface is a part of a here is one sphere like this and here also like this okay so this spherical sphere has halo sphere has center let us say it is a c1 and here it has a c2 try to understand children for convex lens here we are getting c1 here we are getting c2 but whereas for concave lens quite opposite and the line which is joining these two center of curvatures is called principal axis and here the radius of this sphere is called radius of curvature and here is second radius of curvature here is the first radius of curvature same case here also if this r1 is equal to r2 then such a concave lens is called equi concave lens equi concave lens is that clear so here again i'm telling you for this c1 r1 will be right side c2 r2 will be left side whereas for this c2 r2 will be right side for this c1 r1 will be left side it is not compulsory in some some will take this as a c1 r1 then it will be c2 r2 so nothing makes this what difference with that results are not going to be exchanged results will be same only is it clear fine okay now so this is what actually uh, center of curvature and radius of curvatures of the lenses and a principal axis what is the principal axis unit? the line which is joining the center of curvatures of the lens is called is called what principal axis fine children now the important keywords children what is the optical center or optic center first focal point first focal plane second focal point second focal plane first focal point or focus second focal point or foc second focus don't get confused okay fine now come to the optical center optic center children this is a very very imp even the definition is very important for examination point of view children so optic center optical center is nothing but what actually so we know that here is a principal axis right yes here is a principal axis for concave lens this is a principal axis for convex lens concave lens sorry it's a convex lens now the point on the principal axis uh, axis of a given lens I, I repeat once again the point on the principal axis of a lens such a way that any light ray which is directed towards it towards it will go undeviated will go undeviated such a point only we can call it as a optical center or simply optic center we will represent with the o we will represent with the o simply so like this one light ray is towards the point on the principal axis so it is going undeviated yes because it's an optic center and here also yes either the convex lens or concave lens if it is passing through the optic center it will go undeviated the point on the principal axis of a lens such a way that the light ray which is directed towards that point will go undeviated that point only we can call it as a what principal what we can say sorry optical center or simply optic center why light ray is going undeviated just let us recall it because the middle portion of the lens is <coughs> nothing but what very thin glass lab so whenever light is passed through a thin glass lab it will go undeviated okay now fine now children come to the first focal point and first focal plane for first we will see convex lens children so yes we already learned that it is a optic center here is the principal axis there will be one point on the principal axis such a way that the light rays which are for convex lens we are discussing the light rays which are coming and incidenting after refraction they must go parallel to the principal axis 
okay now means what here i, I repeat one so then that point the point from where the light rays are coming and incenting other lens such as that after refraction if they are going parallel to the principal axis of convex lens then that point we can call the first focal point then what is the first focal plane children very simple the plane which is passing through the through the through the first focal point and which is perpendicular to the principal axis is called focal plane i repeat once again what is the focal plane the plane which is passing through that focal point focal point such a that it is a perpendicular to the principal axis such a plane plane is called focal plane and as it is the first focal point it is called the first focal plane now how to define a first focal point for a concave lens look at here the light rays which are incidenting on a concave lens are uh, they incending such a that they will go parallel to the principal axis they will go parallel to the principal axis and these light rays they are not meeting after right after refraction they are going parallel but if they are extended forward if they are extended forward they appear to meet one point on the principal axis that point only we can call as a first first focal point then what is the first focal plane similar to this the what we get the plane which is passing through the first focal point and which is perpendicular to the principal axis is called first focal plane okay fine come to the second focal point first we will discuss for convex lens so the the parallel beam for example the parallel light rays are coming and they are incending such a way that after refraction all refracted light rays will meet at a common point on a principal axis that principal that point will we can call as a second focal point and the plane which is passing through this second focal point and which perpendicular to the principal axis is called second focal plane then how to define a second focal point for a concave lens still yes the the parallel light rays which are coming and incending such a that they'll get diverged they'll get diverged we already discussed diverging action converging action these light rays won't meet but these light rays when extended backward when extended backward yes they appear to meet at a point this point only we can call as a second focal point of a concave lens and the plane which is passing through this second focal point and which is perpendicular to the principal axis is called second focal plane very simple and the very important children for in for any lens actually the second focal point only we will consider as a focus so whenever whenever we are talking about the focus of a convex lens for a convex lens yes it is right side if the object is left side okay now so f2 only we can consider as a focus for this convex lens the focus is here for a concave lens the focus is here clear fine and one more important thing children if both sides the medium is same if the medium is same both sides if the both sides are medium is same then then f1 is equal to f2 which means what here yes what is this distance called children yes this distance called focal length the distance between optic center to the focal point is called focal length this is f2 f2 where is f1 yes this is f1 right this is f1 this is f1 if both sides the medium is same if the both sides are f1 if the both sides the medium is same then f1 is equal to small f1 at the side okay no problem anything is okay. f1 is equal to f2 clear fine and regarding the convex lens after refraction as the light rays are meeting at this common point right meeting that's what we can call this focus as a real focus where the light rays are meeting actually after refraction and here do you think that the light rays are meeting no they are appearing to meet so this kind of focus we can call the virtual focus so with this we can call we can say that convex lens has real focus this is convex lens has real focus whereas concave lens has virtual focus virtual focus virtual focus clear is it clear fine and here children and which factors 
दस इज फोकल लेंथ ऑफ ए गिवन लेंस एंड डिफेंस वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम्पल एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ जिलेंट सो द फैक्टर्स ऑन विच फोकल लेंथ डिफेंस फोकल लेंथ सो द वेरी इंपॉर्टिंग फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज दट वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट सो वी कैन से यस रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर्स ऑब्वियसली रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर्स राइट यस रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर्स so obviously it depends on what you need the radius of curvature if a radius of curvature is more then obviously the focal length of that particular lens will be more that particular lens will be more is it clear fine and here the second one is that here the surrounding medium chill means the medium the medium sorry not medium <laughs> okay so what is it sir medium chill so the medium in which lens has been placed lens has been placed let me give you one example so that you will understand for suppose children here is here is lens for suppose here is let us say it is placed in air so in this case in this case let us say the light ray okay for suppose yes it is like this so that let us say that here is optic center here is a focus for say still example i am telling you let us say the 5 cm 5 cm for same lens the same lens children same lens try to understand now it is placed in a water same lens placed in a water let us say same light ray is incident same light is then what would happen in children yes it will go like this try to understand so here would be the light ray limit optic center I mean this will be more than 5 right more than 5 so let us say 8 cm 8 cm means what is happening here focal length is increasing means the lens if it is other than in a air it can it is placed in any other medium then what will happen children the focal length increases the reason you know the reason is that the relative refractive index decreases focal length is inversely proportional to the relative refractive index here relative refract refractive how to calculate refractive index of lens by refractive index of air here refractive index of lens by refractive index of water so compare with this ratio this ratio is decreased okay na so focal length is inversely proportional to the relative refractive sorry re, inversely proportional inversely proportional to the relative refractive index as relative refractive index decreases focal length increases so in exam in exam they may ask you a question what happens to focal length of a lens if it is placed in a water obviously what will happen focal length increases clear fine children and here what if if uh, what happens if half of the lens is covered with one black paper like this so for suppose let us say children same thing happens with the concave lens also same thing happens the concave lens look at here so for suppose yes here is like this optic center let us say here is one light ray second light ray third light ray some four light rays are coming yes obviously all would meet at a common point common point, like this so this is a point where image is found image from now for suppose if this either upper or lower mark this portion is completely covered with some black paper so that non transparent so that light rays won't won't pass through it then what would happen these light rays won't come out these light rays won't come out try to understand and now look at here before here is a focal length kada yes is there any change in focal length children no if half of the lens is covered with black paper or non transparent uh, uh, cloth or cover something then what would happen there won't be any change in the focal length but children before here four uh, light rays are meeting now two light rays are meeting then what will happen intensity of the image decreases okay now so here focal length remains constant focal length remains constant but chill very 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 important intensity of the image intensity of the image decreases intensity of the image decreases is it clear fine so these are the very important uh, like it's it's not like a basic concepts i can say that even examination point also very important now we'll discuss a principal rays so that what will happen after learning that we are able to draw the ray diagram clear fine children it is principal axis fine children children again i'm telling you so we are going to just discuss the three principal rays actually 
but children the minimum number of uh, light rays which are required in order to get the image are two only so if we have a two uh, incident light rays principal rays which is enough to what we can say construct the ray diagram either with the convex lens or concave lens now let us see that the important light rays which are needed to make a ray diagrams children see simultaneously we'll be discussing for a convex and a concave okay fine so first look at it the first one very important either with a convex lens or concave lens if any light ray as already we discussed if any light ray if it is passing through the optic center then what will happen this light ray will go undeviated this light ray will go undeviated children any light ray if it is passing through the optic center will go undeviated either with a convex lens or concave lens clear fine second one if any light ray is passing through the first focus of convex lens after refraction it will pass parallel to the principal axis whereas the light ray which is incidenting on a concave lens such as that it appears as if it passes through the focus it is not passing it appears like that it is incidenting then after refraction what happens it moves parallel to the principal axis clear fine third one for a convex lens children if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis after refraction it must passes through the focus only it must pass the second focus okay fine whereas when it comes to the concave lens if any light ray is passing parallel to the principal axis after refraction it gets diverged and appears as if it is coming from the second focus when it is extended back it appears as if it is coming from the second focus so these light out of these three children i am telling you this first one and third one we will be considering this second one is not required if you can take also you get the same ray diagram but what happens with this two these two light rays are enough in order to construct the ray diagram either with a convex lens or a concave lens clear fine now with the help of these light rays now we are going will try to see the image formation by convex lens and as well as concave lens children with the convex lens we have six cases so the very important thing is that what we have to notice here in front of a convex lens where we are placing the object then three things we have to notice what is the position of the image is it real image or virtual image third one what is its size yes when it comes to the real image and virtual image children what is a real image what is a virtual image in examination point of view it's very important so when this real image form children yes after refraction if the what we can say after when light rays passes through a lens if the refracted light rays are meeting as a result we get what actually real image so real image is formed by actual meeting of the refracted rays but what about virtual image so virtual image is formed but not actual meeting of the light rays so after refraction light rays will get diverged so they are extended like this when they are extended back they appear to meet as a result virtual image is formed so real image is taken on the screen it can be caught on the screen virtual image cannot be taken on the screen real image is inverted virtual image is erect so in exam again i'm telling you they might ask the difference between real image and the virtual image you should be very careful okay now fine now without doing the lecture ray diagrams are very important examination point of view 19% we can expect one ray diagram either from convex lens or concave lens okay now so three things we have to remember see first anyhow we are going to place object where the image is going to be formed what is the nature of the image that is a real image or virtual image and what is the size of the image either it is a highly diminished or a diminished or enlarged so these are the points which we are going to what uh, learn and which we have to concentrate also okay now fine to f2 no children so look at the board clearly so maximum i try to cover all cases very very important now look at the first case yeah before going to discuss first case let me tell you one important point whenever the object is placed at infinity we get a parallel beam of lights so we are getting a parallel light rays what you should understand we you should understand that object has been placed at infinity children how many number of light rays are required in order to make a ray diagram two light rays okay fine yes first one children yes when object is placed at infinity children when object is placed at infinity what kind of light rays will get parallel light rays children parallel light rays means parallel light rays they might be parallel to the principal axis 
parallel lays, parallel right rays, they may not be parallel to the principal axis. Two cases which we have again. That is the first case. So here parallel beam of light rays and which is parallel to the principal axis. So already we learned if any light ray is compared to the principal axis after refraction, it has to pass through the focus. It has to pass through the focus. That's it. Now, where the light rays are meeting at F2. So, which means image is formed at F2. Is it real image or virtual image? Real image. Why? Because light rays are meeting after refraction and it is highly diminished. It is highly diminished. Is it clear children? Yes. So, this case of the convex lens is used as a burning glass. This case of the convex lens is used as a burning glass. Clear? Fine children. Now, look at it. In this only, parallel light rays only, but they are making some angle with the principal axis. Such a incidence only we can call it the oblique incidence. Then what will happen, you know? Yes, this light ray which is passing through the optic center will go undeviated. Like, like this, it will go undeviated. But this light ray gets refracted. Yes, look at here. Where they are meeting, image is formed on the focal plane. So, image is formed on the focal plane. It's a real image only and it is a highly diminished. Only the difference is that here image is formed at focus, here image is formed on the focal plane. So these are the what shall I it's a conclusions from this case. Clear? Fine. Now, in the second case, object is placed beyond 2F2. So again, we need to consider the same light rays. One light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis, one light ray is passing through the optic center. We know that if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it must pass through the focus, okay. And if any light ray is passing through the optic center, after refraction, it must go undeviated. Now, where this light rays are meeting? Yes, between, very, very important, between, very important, where? F2 and 2F2. So, when the object is placed beyond 2F1, image is formed between F2 and 2F2. It is a real image and you can see it is inverted and diminished which means what? The size of the image is less than that of the object. So, image is formed between F2 and 2F2. It is a real and inverted and it is diminished. This case of the convex lens is used as a camera lens. Okay, fine. Third one children. Again, same light rays which we are considering. This light ray after refraction, yes, it must pass through the what we can say focus only. And this light ray must go undeviated. Okay. And this light ray, look at here, it is going like this. Yes. Fine. Now, if you can notice where they are meeting, yes, so they are meeting at 2F2. At 2F2. If the object is placed at 2F1, image is formed at 2F2. And here actually the image size is, I am not getting exactly. Children, if this size is X, this size also should be X only. Which means what here? Image size is equal to the object size. So, what is the image position? Image position is 2F2. It is a real and inverted and size of the image is equal to the size of the object. Clear? Fine. And this case of the, this case of the convex lens is used in terrestrial telescope. Okay? Fine. Now, come to the Fourth one, when the object is placed between F1 and 2F1, yes, same light rays which we considered. This light ray after refraction, yes, this what will happen? It will go, uh, okay, let us see this light, it will go undeviated, okay, it will go undeviated, optic center. And second light ray which is parallel to principal axis, after refraction, it must pass through the focus, right? Okay, it must pass through focus, 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 yes. Somewhere these two are meeting, where? Look at here. This is the point where image is formed A dash and B dash. So, where the image is formed? Image is formed beyond 2F2. Here after refraction, as the light rays are meeting, it is a real and inward image and it is a magnified image. So, this case of the convex lens is used as is used in a slide projectors. Okay, fine. Now, fifth one, children. Object is placed at F1, at F1, at a focus. Look at the same light rays are considered. The first light ray as it is coming parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it must pass through the focus. Okay. And second light ray, obviously, as it is passing through the optic center, it will go undeviated. Undeviated. Wait. Let me, let me draw properly. Undeviated. So, these two are what kind of light rays? These two are parallel rays. So, children, 
parallel rays can never meet. Hence, we can say that image is going to be formed at infinity. It's a real inverted, highly magnified. So this case of the convex lens is used in spectrometer. Very, very important. So collimeter of a spectrometer in order to obtain the parallel beam of light rays. Done. Fine. And the last one, very, 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 very important. Why it is very, very important? So special. Why so special? So in the first five cases of the convex lens, we got a real image only. So in this case, we are going to get a virtual image where where the object is placed between focus and optic center. Okay, now. So the light ray which is going to the optic center will go undeviated. Okay. Whereas the light ray which is going part of the principal axis after refraction, it must pass through the focus. Okay. Now, just look at these two light rays. These are diverged light rays. Diverged light, diverged light rays like this. Diverged light rays. So, diverged light rays can never meet. Then what we have to do? If the light rays after refraction, if they are not meeting, we have to extend back. Okay. So, try to extend back. Okay. Try to extend back. Yes. So, this is a point where the light rays are appearing to meet. So, such image is what actually? virtual image a dash b dash a b so a real image is from the other side of the lens but whereas virtual image is from same side of the lens okay fine now let us see the characteristics of the image image is from same side of the object and it is a virtual and erect and it is a magnified compared to this it's a magnified and in which case where we can use this yes it is used use as a simple microscope and it is used to overcome the hypermetropia Children, even each and every case with the characteristics of the image and applications are very, very, very important. Is it clear? Fine. Just copy the ray diagrams. And one more thing here, one, one precaution which you can take. So how to get the best ray diagram actually, children. very important. So here, this optic center to F1, if it is X value, here to here to X only you can take. This side, if it is X, it is X. If you can take exact length, perfect, perfect ray diagram you get without any errors. Clear? Just copy this. Now we discuss the uh, characteristics of the image found by concave lens. Copy it. Fine, children. Now let us see the concave lens. First case, children. What is the first case? Object is placed at a infinity. Object is placed at infinity. What happens when object is placed at infinity? So. Let us take here is concave lens. Here is concave lens, and here is principal axis optic center. So, whenever the object is placed in front of children, light rays appear, light rays will come past the principal axis. Now we know that as it is a diverged lens, what happens after refraction? Obviously, these light rays will get diverged. <laughs> diverged. But do you think that these light rays will meet children? No, they can never meet. Then what we have to do? We have to extend back. So extend back. So when you extend back, where they appear to meet? They appear to meet at a F2. Okay. Now. So now what are the characteristics of the image? So image appear to be formed at F2 is a virtual and erect and a highly diminished. Okay, now fine. So what happens if we we'll get a oblique light rays? Yes, image is formed where on the focal plane and the rest of the characteristics are same okay fine and the case two children case two what are the case two anywhere 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 between anywhere between infinity and optic center wherever you can place it so this is a specialty of the concave lens okay na? so let us take here is concave lens so wherever you can place between infinity and optic center image position will be always same image position okay let me take here this principal axis so let us take sorry the optic center so let us say this is f2 this is 2f2 this is f1 and this is 2f1 so whether you can place object here 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 nothing makes different okay na? so for suppose let us take here is this is so it is a b so we have to consider two light rays right yes one light ray must coming part of the principal axis okay and second light ray which is going through the optic center so we know that if any light ray is going 
to the optic center will go undeviated. Okay, fine. So for concave lens, if any light ray is compared to the principal axis, after refraction, it will get diverged. Diverged. Now look at here. This light ray is going here. This light is going here. Like this they are going. So do they meet? No, they are not meeting. Then what we have to do? We have to extend back. So when you extend back, children, look at here. Here. So this light. So this is a position where the light rays are appearing to meet. So this is image. A dash and a B dash. So image is always formed in between object and optic center. It is a virtual, erect and diminished. Clear and fine. So here one important point. In a sixth case, convex lens is forming virtual image. And of course, concave lens forms virtual image. What makes the difference between the virtual images formed by the convex lens, concave lens? Convex lens forms virtual but magnified. Concave lens forms virtual but diminished image. Clear? Fine. So, convex lens forms real image and as well as virtual image. Concave lens forms always virtual image. Okay. So, these are the uh, image formation and the characteristics of the images formed by the convex lens and as well as concave lens. Now, children, the numericals based on the lens. If you want to solve these numericals, just knowing the formulas are not enough, children. We must know the sign convention rules. So now we see the sign convention rules for convex lens and as well as for concave lens. We will see. Positive. Okay, children. Okay, just you forget about this diagram. Whatever is written. Okay, don't get confused. So here, children. Again, I repeat. Without sign convention rules here. You cannot solve the just numericals. Just knowing the formula is not enough. Children, other chapters, just knowing the formula is enough. But in this chapter, you must know the formula and as well as you must know the sign convention rule. I mean, with what sign, whether with a positive we have to substitute or with a negative we have to substitute the very, very important. So, what are the sign convention rules, children? So, according to sign convention rule, children, here, optic center is considered as an origin, which means what? All horizontal measurements, whatever we are measuring, whatever we are taking, must be start from that optic center only. If I want to start, if I want to measure, from where I should start? For object is, if I want to uh, find the object distance, means what? Distance between optic center to object. So I have to go from optic center towards the object. Okay, fine. And here, third point. Third point is very important thing is that here, here, what is the reference to us here? Incident to ratio children here. So, whenever we are measuring the distances, if the distance is taken in the direction of incident ray or positive and opposite direction of the incident ray or negative. Okay, fine. And vertical distances, the measurements taken above the principal X are positive, below the principal X are negative. So, we see the example, then you will get an idea. Okay, now fine children. Now look at here. So in the first case children. So with a convex lens means convex lens forms a real image and as well as virtual. So we will see the sign convention for a real image case and a virtual image case we will see. Okay, fine. So here according to this case children here, here is a lens. Object is placed left side. Of course, you can place right side also. It is not a matter. Okay, fine. So object is placed left side now. Now children, as object is placed here, left side, obviously light rays will go towards the lens. I mean they are going right in this direction they are going so this incident ray direction is very very important so they are going right side they are going right side now if i want to measure the object to distance children object to distance if i want to measure so from where i should start yes i should start from the optic center right okay now look at it here is the optic center here is the object so in order to measure the object what i have to do i will take a tape from here from optic center to a i will go so O to A, I am going. Still, and O to A is, don't you think that is the opposite incident ray? So, O to A, I am going left side, but incident ray is going right side. So, O to A is the object distance. So, as I am going opposite to the direction of the incident ray, it is going to be negative. O A is a negative. Okay. Now, if I want to measure the image distance, image is from right side, real image is from right side, right? So, O to A dash, I am going O to A dash. So, O to A dash means going in the direction of incident ray. So, it is a positive. Okay, fine. Now, focal length for convex length, focus is taken right side. Second focus, generally we can consider the focus of that particular lens. So, it is the right side. So, this distance is the focal length. From where we should start? From optic center. 
O2 F2. O2 F2 means what? We are going in the direction of incident ray. So, when we are measuring, keep this direction of the incident ray in mind. So, it is the right side only. So, we are measuring in the direction of incident ray. So, it is a positive. Now, object height, obviously, object is above the principal axis. A, B, right? So, above the principal axis, positive. But, image is found below the principal axis. A dash, P dash. So, below the measurement is taken, negative. Clear? Fine. So, same convex lens if with a virtual case. What are the same rules are applicable, right? Okay. Object is placed left side. So, this is the direction of incident rays. Direction of incident ray. Now, if I want to measure object distance, O to A, right? So, O to A is opposite to the direction of incident ray. So, O A, that is object distance, is a negative. But here, image is from left side. So, O to A dash. So, O to A dash also opposite to the direction of incident ray. So, it is a negative. So, object height above the principal axis positive image height above the principal axis positive focal length o f2 so o2 f2 means incident ray is going right side only we are measuring in the same direction so it is the positive so here a very important point children focal length of a convex lens is always positive focal length of a convex lens is always positive it's very 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 important as per the sign convention rules now come to the concave lens. Same rules are applicable, right? Okay, so here uh, the very important. So for a concave lens, second focus is situated left side, F2 here. So if I want to measure this, remaining things are same. So if I want to measure the focal length of a concave lens, so O to F2. So this is the direction of incident ray from the object. But I have to measure the focal length means O to F2, I have to move O F2. O F2 means O to F2. So, incident ray is going right side. We are measuring left side. So, opposite direction. So, negative. Concave lens is the focal length of concave lens always negative. And object distance O to A opposite the direction negative. Images from left side O to A dash in this direction we are going negative only. So, object height above the principal axis positive. Image height above the principal axis positive. So, these are the sign convention rules. Is it clear? Fine. Now, we see the chill copy. It is very important. Okay, na? fine. Now, we will see the lens formula, linear magnification and its importance. Then, we see the power of a lens and when it is going to be positive, when it is going to be negative, how can we calculate and what are its units? Okay, na? fine. So, now, we will see the lens formula lens children derivation is not required anyhow it is a one shot video children i said one shot video but it definitely it will go more than one and a half hour because it's a huge chapter this is a big chapter and uh, each and every point is covered okay now fine so lens formula children so so it which gives the relation between focal length image distance and object distance so here is 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u. Some students are getting confused. They are writing plus children. Plus means it's a mirror formula which you learned up to 9th class. Mirrors, spherical mirrors. It is a lens formula. 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u. In exam, they will ask uh, us to write sometimes. Write the lens formula and uh, even uh, mention the what are the meaning of the symbols involved here. So, what is f children? Focal length. v is image distance. u is object distance. Clear? Fine. Now, linear magnification. Linear magnification. Magnification. Linear magnification. Usually, we will represent with the letter small m. Children, linear magnification is defined as the ratio of image height to the object height. Or, it is also defined as image distance to the object distance. There is no unit because it is a ratio between the same two phys uh, uh, similar physical quantities. Now, from this, we can establish one more uh, important relation. H i by H naught is equal to V by U. So, children, very, very, if you have an idea about these two formulas and the sign convention rule, 100% you do the numericals. Children, in this video, we are not going to discuss the numerical. Anyhow, already 
we discussed the numericals in our channel we had uploaded already video all numericals from the textbook we uploaded go to the description you will find the numericals also so in this video we are not going to test the numericals okay now fine so these are the important formulas now what is the importance of linear magnification so the very important thing is that here ch children by knowing the sign whether it is a positive or negative very 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 important look at here see children m can be positive m can be positive and m can be negative also if m value you will get a positive what does it mean if m value is a negative what does it mean try to understand here so anyhow object value is always positive because above the principal axis but real image is formed above the principal axis which means what object height image height will be positive so hence linear magnification is positive so linear magnification is positive means it is virtual image very 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 good it's a virtual image if a linear magnification is negative which means it is real image very important real image clear fine so this is a by knowing the sign we can uh, we can come to know about the nature of the image formed if a linear magnification is positive means virtual image if a linear magnification is negative means real image and by knowing the value what information we have children if 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 see uh, m can be less than 1 m can be equal to 1 m can be greater than 1 so in which case m can be less than 1 children m is a less than 1 means what actually so here a uh, denominator must be greater than that of the numerator which means what here which means what here only it is possible if image height is less than the object height which means what image height is less means what it is a diminished image which means what is a diminished image m is equal to 1 when it is possible when both must be equal which means what here image height must be equal to the object height which means what here same size of the image image size is equal to the object size so when m can be greater than 1 numerator must be greater than that the denominator so which means what here image height must be greater than the object height so here it is enlarged image enlarged image or magnified image so this is information which we can uh, understand by knowing the value and the uh, sign of the linear magnification so children when it comes to the convex uh, convex lens look at here so for a convex lens m can be positive or negative why because convex lens will give you real real image and as well as virtual image and for convex lens m can be less than 1 m can be equal to 1 m can be greater than 1 why because convex lens gives diminished image equal size enlarged image also when it comes to the concave lens children when it comes to the concave lens always very 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 important always m is less than 1 and positive why always less than 1 because concave lens always gives diminished image and virtual image okay so children these are very 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 important many students are getting confused children just be cool just copy this just go through this then you will understand very simple very simple just capture the information that's and store in your brain clear fine so this is about a lens formula linear mag magnification can erase copy it okay fine now <coughs> we'll see the power of your lens power of your lens very simple children let us take a, a simple example i'll tell you so either you can take with a convex lens or concave lens it's not a matter anything is okay but to make you to understand okay so both are convex lenses only but they are different thickness okay they are different thickness so it is thin thin convex lens it is a thick convex lens it is a thick convex lens okay now fine let us say same light rays at the same height are incidenting so obviously what will happen children these light rays are get converged means some deviation is produced 
deviation produced very 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 important okay now for so actually this slider had to go like this am i right okay this slider also had to go like this okay in both cases we notice that here it will go like this okay so that hence this is focus there is a focal length focal length. let us say as the first uh, let us say f1 focal length of the thin lens okay now and here is it is noticed that this is that focus so this is a f2 is a focal length of the focal length of the thin thick lens okay forget about that focal length first of all don't you think that here some deviation is produced so the deviation produced very 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 important so whenever light is incident on the lens some deviation is produced by the lens this deviation produced only we can the ability to deviate the light ray only we can cut the power if you are deviating more more power if you are deviating less less power now here look at here it is a first case it is a deviation that is a delta 1 here the deviation is what is a delta 2 in which case deviation is more obviously second case so here very clear sir delta 2 is greater than the delta 1 let p1 is the power of this lens p2 is the power of this lens so i can say it is the power of first lens is less than the power of second lens okay or else simply why to confuse why to get confused yes so p2 is greater than the p1 is it clear now how power and focal length are related here p2 is more but f2 is less p1 is less f1 is f1 is more so and here we also can say it's a f2 is less than f1 means both are what are inversely proportional to each other very 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 important for thick lens power will be more focal length will be less whereas for thin lens power is less focal length will be more clear fine and how power and focal length are related children yes like this so power is equal to 1 by f here strictly f is given in meters or power is equal to 100 by f here f is in centimeters so what are the units of power of a lens children it's a diopters diopters so it is a diopter symbol is capital d capital d children for convex lens i, I repeat once so for convex lens for a convex lens focal length is positive hence power also positive whereas for a concave lens for a concave lens focal length is negative hence power also negative in a simple way children one for very very much so in exam they ask like this actually so what is the sign sign of the power of a converging lens and diverging actually we should learn like that only so the power of a converging lens is always positive the power of a diverging lens is always negative is it clear so this is all about the power and uh, how power children so numericals based on the relation between the power and focal is very important so you should be very careful here when a uh, uh, focal length is given in terms of meters use this formula if not if a focal length is given in terms of a centimeters so you must use p is equal to 100 by f is it clear just copy it magnification will be more not children so here is the uh, it's a very important last topic here so it is all about the magnifying glass children so before going to understand about the magnifying glass first we need to understand about the least distance of distinct vision children uh, are you sure that what are the objects are which are placed in front of your eyes uh, that uh, you can see very clearly or in a comfortable manner it's not that for example uh, if something is there if it is placed very near to your eye like this when notebook is placed like this very near can you read no so but this object is taken far little bit book 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 is taken little bit far from your eye at a particular distance not too much far also at a, means uh, at a certain distance from your eye the distance will be there if you can place object so that what will happen the object is seen very clearly so that you can feel some comfort in a comfortable manner you can see that so that distance from your eye only we can call it as a least distance of distinct vision of course it varies from person to person for a healthy for healthy eye so it will be around 25 cm okay no? the distance from where you can see the object very uh, comfortable manner and clearly 
ఓకే ఫైన్ అండ్ ఇయర్ వన్ మోర్ థింగ్ విచ్ వీ నీ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ అబౌట్ ద యాంగిల్ ఆఫ్ విజన్ చిల్డ్రన్ యాక్చువల్లీ ద సైజ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇమేజ్ ఓకేనా యాక్చువల్లీ డిపెండ్స్ ఆన్ ది ఇయర్ యాంగిల్ ఆఫ్ విజన్ సి చిల్డ్రన్ దో సమ్ బిగ్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ విల్ బీ దేర్ బట్ ది అపియర్ వెరీ స్మాల్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ లుక్ అట్ అ బిగ్ టవర్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ వెరీ ఫార్ సో ఇట్ అపేస్ వెరీ వెరీ స్మాల్ బట్ అ స్మాల్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ వెన్ ఇస్ ప్లేస్ నియర్ టు యర్ ఐ ఇట్ అపేస్ వెరీ బిగ్ what is the reason children look at here so for suppose initially initially look at it. here two objects are there is a try very well so why this object is appearing bigger why this object object is appearing very smaller it depends on the angle so from here from this extreme end what are the ang- uh, lighters which are coming they are making certain angle at i so let us say due to this uh, the lighters which are coming from this object ab so theta 1 okay whereas at x y one more object is placed small object is placed so these lighters are going and make an angle here so that this is a angle made so theta 2 so theta 1 is greater than the theta 2 yes or no so what is the angle of the vision the angle made by the light rays which are coming from the extreme ends of an object okay which are making an angle at an eye is called as angle of vision if this angle of vision is more the image size will be bigger you feel bigger if the angle of vision is less the image size will be little bit smaller only so here this angle of vision is a deciding the size of the image size of image size of image i can say that so size of the image is proportional to the angle of the vision angle of the vision is it clear fine so now the very important thing is that here now for suppose so i said that for example you think that okay i am a healthy person of course uh, it's not a healthy because i have a spits obviously i have some side okay let us just assume assume that i'm a healthy person only i have a healthy eye so obviously if an object is placed at a 25 centimeters distance from my eye i should see very clearly okay fine now what i'll do 25 centimeters from my eye i'll put one very small dot one dot an object i'll put small very point of the type place that point object uh, object is very tiny then what are the light rays which are coming and making an angle at my eye also very very small so obviously i feel the image size very very small smaller image is formed at my eye can i see it clearly no then what we have to do for that only we are going to use a magnifying glass this magnifying glass what will what will happen when it is introduced between this small tiny object and my eye what will happen at a particular place we have to adjust the uh, yeah, distance such a that such a that this uh, image size is increased enlarged the image size the what we can the image of this object is increased so i can see the image of this object is a bigger why bigger this lens this lens gives the enlarged image of this tiny object so that the image is will become bigger so these light rays which are coming from this bigger image makes and what we get the bigger angle they will make so that what will happen i can feel a bigger image try to answer very 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 important so why are we using actually what we can say magnifying glass magnifying glass increases the size of the object so that the light rays which are coming from that image so that image acts like object for our eye actually okay now that will become more so that we can see it very clearly so in general which is uh, used as a magnifying glass children yes as a simple microscope convex lens but convex lens with a short focal length in which case the case where the object is placed between focus and optic center when the object is placed between focus and optic center of the convex lens it gives bigger image i see try to understand here very very important so here this what are the light rays which are coming and making an angle at i will be very small but from here is bigger image right obviously what will happen the angle of vision is increased mean the magnifying the magnification is increased is it clear so which is which lens which convex lens is preferred as a magnifying glass to lens so convex lens with a short focal length short focal length means more power more power means thick lens okay so how to calculate the magnifying power of a, a given convex lens or it is a magnifying glass or simple microscope it is 1 plus d by f d is a least distance of distinct division f is a focal length so look at here and here one remains constant only these two are inversely proportional to each other which means what here if focal length is more magnifying power is less 
if focal length is less magnifying power is more so we want more magnifying power right so we should use uh, lens with a less focal length less focal length more power more power means thickness should be more is it clear so in exam they may ask a question how can we increase the magnifying power of a simple microscope by using the convex lens with a short focal length we can increase the magnifying power we can increase the magnifying power okay now fine children and here how to calculate the focal length of a given convex lens given so here object distance method is there children very simple look at here for example here is a convex lens try to understand and here is a this one for example object is at infinity children here only one important point infinity means don't think that the point object will be at a, or on the moon surface or mars surface is not that actually so compare with the radius of the lens if the distance is more then we can call it as a uh, call we can call that object is at uh, we can say that the object is at a infinity only okay now. so when the object is at infinity what kind of light rays will get parallel light rays so like this we get a light rays parallel light rays we get parallel light rays we will get and we know the means what here object distance what is infinity okay now if any light rays are coming back if, uh, if any light rays are coming parallel to the principal axis after refraction okay now what will happen they all are converged they all are converged very 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 important so this is a point where image is formed this what actually image distance this what actually image distance now use a uh, lens formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u so u should be a negative anyhow this is going to be an uh, infinity right 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by infinity why i am taking place still and because it is a left side of the distance is negative so but 1 by infinity is 0 so here 1 by f is equal to 1 by v so f is equal to v now what is the distance which you will get here is a focal length this is a, in a simple manner we can uh, find the we can determine the focal length of a convex lens experimentally okay now fine and here one more way also is there can you this yes look at here fine sir. look at here here is a convex lens okay now. so i'm not going in depth i'm in the shortcut way i'm telling you try to understand so here is mm, i think uh, we should take four principal axis yes and here plane mirror is placed perpendicular perpendicular to the principal axis perpendicular to principal very very important even examination point of this question is very important so let us see here the point object is placed point object is placed okay na? so point object is placed okay let us point object okay na? so whenever a point object is placed and here is placed such that the light rays are coming like this and after refraction they are going parallel to the principal axis they are going parallel to the principal axis okay and this point is called what children focal point so when object is placed at a focal point only we get this kind of light rays what are a divergent light rays which will incident in the convex lens and after refraction they will go parallel to the principal axis so this what actually it's nothing but focal point focal point focal point but here what is happening light rays are incident perpendicular right okay they will get reflected whenever light incident on a what we can say plane mirror perpendicular to its surface its path is retraced so the, like this light rays will be coming like this light rays will be coming what kind of light rays are coming children parallel light rays whenever parallel light rays are coming to the principal axis of a convex lens after refraction they will get converged so where they are getting converged the point where you have placed the object where you have placed the object only so this is a image distance and this point is the focal point and this is going to be a focal length what is the nature of the image same size as the object means point size only right it's a real and inverted see as it's a highly diminished we can't say it's inverted it's inverted see all real images by default they are inverted only okay na? so in, in general you know in a what up to 10th class children so this method we use to calculate the focal length okay now fine children and here one more thing by changing the uh, distance of the mirror from the lens will there be any change in the 
uh, what we can say image distance children no there won't be any change there won't be any change in the characters of the image there won't be any change in the focal length image distance nature characters everything same only okay fine children examination point of view what are the applications of convex lens and concave lens of course we discussed but let us uh, recall once again applications of convex lens it is used as a burning glass it is used as a camera uh, lens uh, what we can say it is uh, used in a terrestrial telescope it is used in a slide projectors it is used in a spectrometer it is uh, what we can say it is uh, uh, used in uh, as a you know a simple microscope that is a magnifying glass come to the concave lens children it is used in a galilean telescope and it is also used to overcome the myopia and how can you find the different uh, differences between or how can you identify the uh, difference between convex lens and concave lens so we have two methods first one is touching method physical touch so when you can touch the convex lens in middle it is thick at a periphery it is a thin whereas the concave lens at a middle it is thin at a periphery it is a thick that's a touching method physical touch method it is and one more is what actually image formation right when you can see the object through the convex lens it appears bigger in size but whereas concave lens it gives a diminished image only that too convex lens will give a real image concave always gives virtual image so children these are the concepts of refraction through a lens children again i'm telling you if you need a in detail discussion of uh, this chapter already we had uploaded all topics of refraction through a lens links will be given in the description and one more thing numericals from this chapter are very important children all numericals already we discussed so that link also is given in the description go through the link so that you will have a good practice okay fine children again i'm telling you the very important thing don't forget to read the textbook so reading the textbook is mandatory okay so when you read the textbook chiller you can get the command on the concepts so that you won't think about the uh, question which are going to be asked in the exam any question you will be able to do the answer chiller okay chiller so hope uh, you people will have a great preparation and hope you people will have a, a you know what we can say uh, a good time so that you will get the uh, good marks in the exam chiller okay thank you so much all the very best